Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm gonna break down the top 10 advanced tricks and tips for NH and hybrid PKing. I wanna let you guys know that throughout this video, I'm gonna be playing clips. Most of them will correlate with what I'm saying, but some of them are just going to be clips of NHing or hybriding because I didn't want you guys just have to listen to this pretty long video without having anything to watch. Because there are a lot of different names used for these styles of fighting, for this video's purpose, when I say hybriding, I mean just using magic and melee. In aging, which is short for no honor, is using all three styles of fighting while also switching your overhead prayer. The second thing I want to clarify is that not all of the clips you're going to see in this video are of me. However, I have gotten permission to use all of the clips, so don't you worry. And lastly, I want to say that if you have never hybrided or NHPK'd in your life, this video is not going to be for you. This is not meant for beginners. I'm going to be breaking down some pretty advanced strategies that may seem very overwhelming to you if you don't know the basics yet. If you want to watch a very good basics guide, check out this video made by another good friend of mine, Punches. Oh, and this top 10 list is not in any particular order of importance. All right, let's get started. Tip number one, be patient. This one I definitely find myself not following as much as I need to. Calm down with trying to switch super fast and look super fancy like you might see in some YouTube videos. A lot of times people see a good hybrid switching very quickly on videos and they correlate switching fast with being good. And trust me, they're not the same thing. Think about this. You might see someone busting out some incredibly cool looking moves in street ball, but you would never see an NBA player do that in a real game. Now, if you are just trying to get some cool clips and that's what you like doing, by all means, go for it. But if you're focusing on trying to get some legit kills, you got to calm down, take a deep breath, ease your tight grip on your mouse and start to actually use your brain while in a fight. Don't let yourself just go on autopilot mode and start doing a bunch of switches for no purpose. Also, you have to be okay with not hitting every single attack on the first tick that you're able to. This is a super important strategy that I'm going to get into in detail later on in this video, but check out this clip right here. All right, so after this barrage right here, I want you to notice what he does. He saw that even though his opponent put on Mystics, he knew it was a fakie, so he put on his melee tank gear. And then for a few seconds, neither of these guys actually hit each other, and that's very much on purpose. After those few seconds were up, he predicted that his opponent was going to do a one-tick barrage, so he put on his mage tank gear, and that's exactly what happened. Notice how he acted with so much patience and was able to perfectly tank the next few hits from his opponent while also getting his attacks off while his opponent was not on tank gear. So in summary, if you're patient, you can end up getting a lot more hits off tank gear or off prayer. <laughs> Tip number two, assume that you're an absolutely terrible PKer. Now I know you're probably thinking that sounds a little weird and you're probably debating clicking off this video right now, but wait, let me explain. If you think that you're the best and you start getting outplayed, it's going to be very hard for you to adjust your game because then you have to fight your own instinct. This is kind of hard to put in words, but what I'm trying to get at is that if you think that your style of fighting is the best style of fighting and yet someone is outplaying you, i.e. you've become predictable to your opponent, it's going to be difficult for you to make yourself adjust to your style of play because... Why the hell would you want to change up your game if it's the best? This is going to make your subconscious put up a roadblock and basically stop you from changing up your game. And I'm sure it's different for everyone, but for me, if I assume I'm trash, I'm going to start adapting to my opponent. I'm not going to follow a pattern of just doing a lot of very fast switches. You're also going to be paying more attention to what your opponent is doing and you'll be able to predict your opponent better. Bottom line, if you think you're the best, you're not going to be able to adapt. Be open to making some audibles to your strategy at a moment's notice. <laughs> Tip 3. Tick delaying. I would almost argue that this tactic is actually a bit better and easier to do while hybriding, but definitely still effective in an aging. 
Before I go into tick delaying and what it is, it's important that you understand this. There is no such thing as being truly unpredictable. Everything we do as humans is guided by instinct. However, according to Maslow, humans do have the ability to override these instincts. It just takes mental focus and practice to do. Of course, we want to be as unpredictable as possible. In my opinion, the best way to be unpredictable is by being able to predict your opponent. The old saying that the best offense is a good defense is quite true when it comes to hybrid slash in aging, just as it is with sports. If you know what your opponent is going to do, you can use a tactic called tick delaying. The name describes it perfectly. You are just going to wait one tick, or possibly more, but usually just one, from when you are able to perform an attack until you actually do perform an attack. And here's why. Your opponent is trying to do the same thing you are. Predict your next move. And usually, unless you tick delay too often, your opponent is going to expect you to hit on the exact tick that you're able to. Now, if you just wait one extra tick, you can attack with whatever style your opponent isn't praying. This doesn't work every time, obviously, but this tends to be very effective. Here's a clip of Tick Delang. In this clip, a total noob knew that, by the way, that is his name, a total noob. I'm not calling him a noob. But anyways, a total noob knew that if he pulled out his staff and mage's book on the tick that he was supposed to get a whip hit on and waited one extra tick, he could probably get an AGS spec on robes, and that's exactly what happened. The most important thing when it comes to any style of PKing is your special attack. You want to maximize your kill chance percentage, and the best way to do that is to get your special attack off tank gear or prayer. He could have one tick AGS spec to the tick before he actually hit, but this is a perfect example of a thought out tick delay. It's very important to note that a tick delay is a calculated and planned delay. In order for it to be effective, you need to know why you're doing a tick delay and what you hope to get out of it. <laughs> Tip number four, movement. In general, don't use the minimap to run while in a fight. The reason being that a lot of times when clicking on the minimap, your character is going to run too far away to use melee or to even have it as a fakie option. The only two exceptions for using your minimap to run would be to run away while you're low HP and recovering while trying to stay out of reach of your opponent, or if you're trying to escape or chase down your opponent in the wilderness. But, in general, in a normal hybrid or NH fight, the max squares away you want to be is around four squares. You can run four squares and back in between each whip hit if done correctly. However, in general, I would say you want to typically stay one to two squares away from your opponent. Check out this clip right here. This clip isn't anything too fancy, but it's very effective. He is moving basically in a box around his opponent while staying one to two squares away from his opponent, so he can melee at any time. He is also moving from opposite side of his opponent's screen to the other, making it much more difficult for his opponent to attack him. Even if he doesn't melee him, the fact that he could makes him less predictable and more of a threat. You want to make sure that you use movement to your advantage. I see people forgetting to move around while unfrozen far too often. I'm not going to go super in depth with how the mechanics of movement work, but check out this video right here if you want to know more about that. But in summary, if you make a 180 degree turn, your character model can't keep up with where your character is actually being registered. This can be kind of confusing if you aren't familiar with this, but by using this, you can appear to actually hit with melee from up to three to four squares away, which can help you be unpredictable. Now, if you start using some of these movement techniques while also using some movement delaying weapons, such as the leaf bladed sword and the hunter's crossbow, you can start to get some pretty cool looking movement. How effective this movement is, is up to debate, but if you're looking for some style points, you might try it out. <laughs> Tip number five, divide your switches. Dividing your switches is something that will make you harder to predict because your opponent is not going to know if you're about to hit with melee or mage. Let me explain. Look at the gear he is in right now on this freeze frame. He could very easily do a three-way switch into a whip hit or just put on his mystic robe top and hit with magic. You have to make it easier on yourself, guys. Don't rely on doing five-way switches for all your one ticks. Split them up. Not only does this make it easier for you to do, but it also adds another layer to your game, making you even more unpredictable. 
This also prevents the issue that happens when you're trying to one tick a five way barrage. Because if you start switching and halfway through the switch, you realize he is going to be in robes for your mage hit and you want to switch back to a whip, you're going to lose a game tick. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, Tyler, this sounds like you're just tick delaying and you said that was a good thing earlier. Well, that's a good point you brought up, but you're wrong because to me, a tick delay is a calculated and planned out delay. This was more of a mistake that you're trying to recover from and we don't like that. Just remember, guys, make it easier on yourself by dividing your switches into several ticks. You can even do this with just one item. I have noticed that just by putting on a fire or infernal cape while you're in robes and a staff, people still tend to think you're about to hit with melee. <laughs> Tip number six, how to be more unpredictable. I get it in this video I say the word unpredictable quite a lot, but it's because it's very important. Here are two great methods that I like to use when I want to become more unpredictable. The first method is to act like a noob. Now I know this also sounds a bit weird and you're probably wondering just what kind of drugs I'm on at the moment, but let me explain. Sometimes appearing like a noob can give you the edge in a fight because people don't really expect you to act newbie if you have proven yourself in previous fights. What I mean by this is doing things that might not look very nice but are very effective. For example, hitting with the same attack style over and over again. Your opponent is surely going to be thinking, well, he definitely isn't going to hit me with that attack style again. But little does your opponent know. But back to the point, appearing newbie can also lower your opponent's guard as he might start looking at you as much less of a threat. This might make him risk his HP a bit more or just completely not see a special attack coming his way. The other method on how to be more unpredictable, I briefly talked about earlier in this video, but I want to go further into detail now. There's no such thing as being 100% unpredictable in humans because we don't have the mental capacity to think about every single possible pattern that you and your opponent could be doing. So the closest thing to being unpredictable is actually the exact opposite. You have to focus on predicting your opponent and then countering that. Because even if you wrote down a very elaborate pattern to follow, such as whip mage, whip mage, whip, whip, whip mage, you still could be predicted. By the way, please don't do that. That's a horrible idea. I was simply using it as an example. Do not write down what you're going to do. Also, when you're focusing on your opponent more, you're most likely not going to go on autopilot mode and try to do 100 fakies in between each hit and not putting much thought into what you're actually doing. If you don't know what autopilot mode is, I can promise you that it's happened to you plenty of times in your life. Basically, when your mind starts to wander a bit, your brain can switch to autopilot mode, which allows you to carry on doing tasks quickly and accurately, but without conscious thought. That doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world when it comes to NHing, as you're still able to act quickly and accurately, but conscious thought is what separates a great PKer from a good PKer. <laughs> Tip number seven, one tick specking. Now, I debated if I wanted to talk about this in this video at all because I feel like this could be pretty intermediate, but maybe it will help some people. I also notice a lot of people not doing this when this should be absolutely done as much as possible. This is by far the meta for getting kills. So RuneScape works on a tick system. Every single tick is approximately 0.6 seconds. A one tick spec is when on the last tick before you're able to hit your opponent, you switch into your spec weapon, click the special attack bar, and click your opponent all in one game tick. What this does is allow your special attack to go off without your opponent being able to see it. Now to go even further in detail, the maximum amount of squares that you can be away from your opponent and still one tick spec is three squares away. And that's not just linear, it can be diagonal as well. Take a look at this box. Anyone who is inside this box is in one tick distance. If you're outside of the box, you don't need to be praying melee as your opponent will have to take at least one step towards you before being able to one tick spec you. For example, that's what happens in this clip. He wasn't close enough to be in a one tick distance so his opponent could have seen that coming. The last thing I'm going to talk about with one tick specking is probably going to be the most useful tip regarding one ticking. If you want to go for some high HP kill chances with the DDS off prayer, here is a very useful and effective method. 
You will need to have 100% spec before doing this in order for it to work. Go ahead and watch this clip of my friend Swampy Lizard do this. Even though he doesn't get the kill, you get the idea. What you want to do is go ahead and waste a DDS spec on Melee Prey. I want you to continue to do fakies until you delay your next attack by one tick. On that delayed tick, I want you to one tick DDS Gmail spec your opponent. Now the reason why this one works is because oftentimes your opponent will not expect you to DDS again when you have just wasted one on prayer. Finally, another extremely powerful way of getting kills is by one tick specking someone on an anti. What that means is that when your opponent is rushing in to kill you, a lot of times they forget to put their melee prey on, which leaves them very vulnerable, as you can see right here. <laughs> Tip number eight, fakies. In order to do good fakies, you need to predict what your opponent thinks you're going to do. You shouldn't be just doing random fakies because then you stop actually using your brain. You're just going on instinct and patterns that you've developed. Sometimes, the best fakies are by not doing a fakie at all. If you constantly one-tick everything, it doesn't matter how fast you are, you become predictable. A fakie could actually just be one item. For example, just using your fire cape to melee fakie is a good one. Baiting is also a huge thing when it comes to fakies and predictability. If you one-tick every hit for a few hits in a row, your opponent is going to pick up on that and be able to predict you. What I've noticed is that just by one ticking two hits in a row, your opponent is going to expect you to one tick the third hit as well. And that's where you do a tick delay and switch back to whatever you were initially faking with. Bonus tip. You want to make sure that you're tanking your opponent's spec as that is the most dangerous thing your opponent can do to you. If you predict your opponent is going to spec, make sure you bait him i.e. give him the information that you're not going to be able to tank his specs. For example, running next to your opponent in robes like you're about to mage, and then at the last second put on your tank gear and let him spec. <laughs> Tip number 9, ease up. My buddy Katar and I were talking one day after we had just finished seshing, and he pointed something out to me that completely changed my entire game. I was actually shocked at how much this one small thing improved my game. He told me to relax and take a deep breath. He reminded me to loosen my grip on my mouse and that it's just a game. I realized that I was gripping my mouse so tightly because I really wanted to beat him and I was trying way too hard. I was playing incredibly tense and making a ton of misclicks that I don't normally make. After a few weeks of trying to remind myself to relax while in aging, I started getting a lot more kills and actually enjoying the game much more. I brought the same thing up to another buddy of mine and he actually told me that he has to listen to very relaxing classical music while in aging when he wants to go try hard. Which is uh, kind of funny, but at the same time, it works and it proves the point that I'm trying to make. Everyone has different tastes in music and different ways of relaxing, but I suggest that you find some music that is calming and peaceful to you and try throwing that on every once in a while. Also, if you're listening to very intense music like metal, hard rock, dubstep, etc., it can make you want to do anything to kill your opponent instead of trying to outsmart your opponent. A lot of times, music with a high BPM can actually increase impulsive decisions, and when in aging, you want to be thinking rationally and calmly. <laughs> Tip number 10, get sleep. Try to get six to eight hours of sleep every single night. I know a lot of people who game tend to stay up very late and get in very bad sleeping habits, myself included. However, when you're sleep deprived, you're not operating at 100% mental capacity. And a huge part of NHing and hybriding is the mental game. So you're already putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that feeling when you're exhausted and trying to hybrid and you're just making all of the wrong moves and you start to question yourself. Well, don't question yourself. You're not that bad. You're just exhausted. When you have adequate sleep, you'll be able to remember so much more. You'll be able to pick up on what your opponent has been doing and what he will continue to do, aka pattern recognition. Also, not to mention that being on a good sleep schedule has an insane amount of health benefits. Wait, what's this? Another bonus tip? That's right, boys. I wanted to throw in one small tip that I think is pretty important. When possible, 
you should try to hit right after your opponent hits you when starting a fight. If he hits you first, he has to wait four game ticks before he can hit you again, depending on the weapon he hits you with. But this allows you to have three game ticks to barrage and then one game tick to put on tank gear. This is just a small thing that can make a huge difference when trying to outlast your opponent. Alright guys, that wraps up this tricks and tips video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I put a lot of time and effort into this one, and I hope you guys actually get a lot of value out of it. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see more of this type of content, and I hope I explain things well. It's very difficult to put these things into words, <laughs> um, but I hope I made it clear, and if you guys have any questions, I will definitely respond to anything in the comment section. Take care, guys.